You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 45 minutes after the hour. And we're back with Jean Broida. And we were discussing the Chinese implementation of Tattletale software and apps. Yeah. yeah. And China has a history of public shaming. They think it's perfectly okay. In fact, very effective. And it is. We're tribal people, we humans. And we hate to be shamed. We want to be accepted. We want to be loved. Being banned or uh, what's it called? Exiled from your social group, your tribe is the worst thing that could happen. Banishment is the worst thing, which is why people are upset by social media bans. Who who hasn't been in Facebook jail for some Believe it or not, I have not. Posts. Well, <laughs> that's a testament to how nice you really are, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm very opinionated. <laughs> I'm not telling you my score. <laughs> they pay me to be provocative. I'm a conspiracy writer. So yes, you are. You and a good one, too. I like to poke the stick and see what will happen. I'll put my hand down the badger hole at least a little ways till I hear some hissing. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, I have do. had some ominous communications, and I don't know quite how to take these from social media companions, people that I've met on social media, never met face to face. You and I have met face to face, Kat. Have. That's I how know we started our friendship. And, and, and legitimate. But on Facebook, of course, and other social media platforms, you're going to meet people. You may never meet physically, and you're taking their word that they are who they're professing to be. And I have had conversations with individuals on Facebook that led me to believe they were not everyday people. They were actually, and this may sound a little cuckoo or paranoid, but uh, the way they were talking, say, about uh, climate change, led me to believe that someone, some agency was paying them to basically follow a script and stir up trouble right. with unsupported claims, wild claims. And I will confront such people and ask them, I'll ask the group where they're posting this sort of outlandish and unsupported and seemingly intentionally inflammatory language messages and say does anybody know this person do we have a confirmation this is a real person anybody and then ask the person are you is this for real or is someone paying you to write this because i'm convinced think about it trillions of dollars of black ops money unaccountable for not gone missing it's been spent yes somebody knows where it went it's not accountable to the general public because it doesn't have to be, and it never will be, probably. Can so, I interject something there? Absolutely. Six million, or at least six million, probably much more. I may have my consonant wrong. From the State Department, with nary an inquiry. Well, you if know, we're talking, I mean, there's the there's Pentagon things that just budget, disappear. I think the Pentagon budget is up to. Well, Donald Rumsfeld mentioned three point two trillion. Yes, I'm sorry, two point three trillion. That was the day before nine eleven, two thousand one. Yes, but I think now the amount is up to twenty three trillion, if memory serves. Twenty, and nobody really knows because you have to do sort of backwards math and look. Well, for and the you have voids. to trust the numbers that you're being given. You basically have to look at what the IRS is taking in. And then subtract what we know money has been spent on, and then the rest is this big black hole of uncertainty. And they can do it to some extent by department and divisions and departments. So Rumsfeld had asked for an audit of the Pentagon budget, mm-hmm. and $2.3 trillion came up unaccountable for. It doesn't mean nobody knows what it was spent on. It means they're not telling us. Right. That's quite a they, bit of change have a very convenient way of losing data that's of vital interest to the American people and 
to lose such data would be a violation of national security, basically. But they're never investigated. They get no, away. they're not. So if you think about these numbers, and a trillion dollars is very hard for most people to visualize, but there's a great website that shows what a trillion dollars looks like if you stacked up $100 bills. And it is a huge volume of $100 bills, basically a skyscraper. And I recommend going to look at what it looks to see what a trillion dollars looks like and $23 trillion. I mean, the, you get a little city of skyscrapers when you get into $23 trillion. Do you that's have that website? Uh, I can look for it at the break. Okay, that would be awesome. We'll share it with people. Yeah, absolutely. So where is that money going? It's going into operations. Uh, Russell Targ has come into the public about – come come clean, if you will, is disclosing about uh, ESP research that he was working for DARPA to develop, Defense Area Research Projects Agency. These are very top secret uh, military development, research and development programs on how to weaponize anything. Remember how we were talking about weaponizing what was the thing? Well, yeah, but I mean, side oh, research squid- has squid-ing. been going on since the cult. <laughs> but, yeah. But the side yes. research has been going on since you know, pre-Cold War. Oh, certainly. And probably before that. You know, mm-hmm. look at Madame Blavatsky and uh, Rudolf Steiner. People have been interested in these things for and, – and what about Australian Aborigines? I think the case could be made that they're into psi and ESP. They may not call it that. But going for altered states of consciousness, mm-hmm. it invokes that part of our our being. And a lot of cultures think we're not well balanced as human beings unless we exercise both sides of our personalities. Our waking state got to survive and you know look after my basic human needs. Certainly that's important. But uh, going for the dream state is equally important. Being intuitive is important. I think. I see that balance is important in everything. Which gets us kind of back to the crop circle intuitions and other intuitions in general. Why are certain people being tapped to channel information? And I had mentioned this alien interview book earlier because I have connected with a couple of sisters in Czech Republic who claim that they are channeling the same alien intelligence that channeled to Matilda McElroy the information in Alien Interview. Same beings, the same actual beings, only how many years? Yes, so from 1947-ish was when the Alien Interview took place, 47, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, so basically 70 years, 71 years later, same entities, they're still alive and they're channeling to other people including sisters in Czech Republic one sister is the medium who uses a homemade Ouija board and the other or Ouija board the other one transcribes the answers and I've listened to some sessions of theirs and some of the answers are quite detailed but don't seem all that helpful Good information, but not it's not clear why this information is being passed along, why all the energy is being spent to convey this particular information. And in other cases, and more many other cases, a good question is asked, a vague answer is given or an incomplete answer is given, and instead of pressing for more detail, another completely unrelated question is asked, often with the same incomplete answer and so nothing is really answered at least to my satisfaction yes there may be a connection but the interviewing leaves something to be desired unless they have edited it for some reason out of necessity i don't know i'm trying to communicate positively and encouraging these people want to get their word out and uh if anybody knows how to speak Czech, <laughs> contact me, Jean at lightwork111.com, and let's get some translation going because I don't speak Czech either. <laughs> you know, you, are you using Google Translate to get what you're doing done? 
Well, I do if it's written down, but they're doing uh, videos of their sessions ah. with some subtitles, printed subtitles. But a lot of the times the printed subtitles are so cryptic, I can't figure out what it is they're trying to say. Right. And they're doing their best. I'm not being harsh and critical. I'm saying that it's incomprehensible. And yet it must be important if these beings are taking this much time and energy to convey the information. Or is, you know, here comes the skeptical part, or is this put on for a show? Is it, it they makes have attracted the attention of credible observers. Uh, and and she's using a Ouija board. People associated with NASA projects and stuff appear to be hanging out with, and that I don't, I'm not sure if that's a, an endorsement or not, but it, it is what it is. It is. You know, people who would appear to have credentials seem to be interested in what they're doing, at least. And but the fact of the matter is that anyone who teaches remote viewing, including Russell Targ, says that. You can learn how to do it yourself. It's not hard. Nope. You put yourself in a relaxed state of mind and you have paper and something to draw with and you let your mind wander and draw what you imagine or visualize. You kind of have to know where your mind has wandered so that you can validate what you're seeing. There are ways to test remote viewing if you mm -hmm. want to see if you're doing it, that's for sure, Yeah. where uh, an unseen observer hides a target somewhere and the remote viewer attempts to figure out what that thing is. Yes. But frankly, anybody can do it. There'll be time as a metaphysicist and a psychic, there's times when you're on and there's times when you're off. And yes. this is part of the reason that tribal people use drug concoctions is to almost force a state of consciousness that is uh, receptive to visions and highly intuitive information. I'm not saying it's a requirement. I'm saying you can blow that I have perception open with some of these drug combinations that natives use. And, and they're, they've been designed over generations to be as safe as possible and useful as possible, useful in a metaphysical or psychic sense. That's true. I know credible researchers personally who have used peyote and the experience didn't sound incredibly controlled or safe, but it was interesting to hear about. And yeah, we're going to break again for the top of the hour news break in about 25 seconds. But I would like to continue this because I think that this topic is really fantastic. I'm interested in, in hearing some more about it. And we'll see if we can't find you some Czech interpreters. <laughs> <laughs> Just need one. Just need Just the one, but one. always good to have the word out and maybe get a few more answers, right? You never know. A few who's more replies. Listening. Yeah, well, you never know who's listening here, but I'm really darn glad to be part of it. And for our listeners, we are WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. This is our five minute news break. It's a great time to fill up that mug or. Check that score, as it were, tonight. We'll be right back in five minutes, and I hope you find a little good news here tonight. Welcome back to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is five minutes after the hour. That was not correct. We're going to try this one more time. Catch you in five. Support for this NPR podcast and the following message come from Microsoft. Brian Arakpo and Michael Griffin were teammates in the NFL, and now they own a 